the wall and a serpent bit him. All right. Amos was the prophet called by God, as many of you are prophets here today. He was talking to the people who had turned away from God, and they were being cruel to those who were poor, and they were living selfish lives. So I asked, how do we apply this text to us today? As Christians, as God's people, when I pray for God to give me the subject today in order to keep it real, and what should I tell the women of today? He said, tell them this, Lorette. He said, tell them that God is giving you a warning to anyone who is playing church. The text I just read says it all. Amos was dealing with those who tried to pull, fool people by acting holy. The thing about it is that you can fool men. But That's you right. can't fool God. Hallelujah. Man is easy to fool because his assessment of us and his interpretation of us is based on what he sees on the outside. All right. He looks at that outside yes. appearance yes. with the yes. natural eye. Right. But Amos is letting us know that there's an unseen eye right. and there is an unseen ear and it belongs to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. God sees stuff and God knows stuff right. about you and me right. that right. don't nobody else know. Right. I tell people all the time, I said, don't be too quick to be judging folks yeah. on what you think you know about Come on now. or what, you, what somebody said because you don't really know it. The truth of the matter is that some people are real good and be a one thing around yeah. you. But then when you go behind closed doors, they turn into something else. Right. Matter of fact, you might be surprised that you're sitting right next to somebody right now that got some stuff going on that you don't even know about. Right. But you see, that's our limitation. We can only look at the outward appearance, but God has the power to look through man's skeletal structure and see the state of their heart and their soul. Yes. It is apparent from the text here that Amos has issues with a few folks. All right. All right. Evidently there were some so-called church members uh -huh. who were going around talking about how glorious it's going to be when the Lord comes. Yes. When I read the scripture I thought about how people are doing the same thing right now today. Yes. Yeah. Amen. I've heard people stand up in church on Sunday, standing up there testifying, uh -uh. excuse me, I mean testifying about how, oh saints, if you miss me from singing or preaching down here, and you can't find me nowhere, come on up to the city called Glory, and I'll be waiting up here for right there for you. Hmm. But tell me this, it sounds good, don't it? It sounds convincing. That's but right. you heard the saying about the proof being in the pudding. Oh, come on now. And the spice being in the cake. <laughs> if you cannot get things together here on earth That's and right. love your brothers and sisters yeah. right here on earth, yeah. how are you going to tell them to meet you up in glory? <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. Right. If you're playing church right yeah. now, you better stop. That's Amen. Right. This is serious because time is running out. I don't know when or what time he's coming, but I know one thing for sure that it's just a matter of time. So now, Amos is trying to warn Israel in this text that destruction was approaching. Look at what he says in verse 16 and 17. He says, Therefore the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says this, there shall be wailing in the streets, and they shall say in the highways, Alas, alas, they shall be the former, former to mourning, and skillful lamenters to wailing. In all vineyards there shall be wailing, for I will pass through you, says the Lord. In other words, Amos is telling them that God's judgment and devastation will be complete throughout the land. And that there's going to be sorrow on every street. And that it's going to lead them to mourning. 
Back in the Bible days, you remember they had professional mourners. Mm -hmm. So if somebody died or something happened and you didn't have a family, you could pay somebody a fee and then they would come and cry for All you. Right. <laughs> but the Bible says that these are the people who will profit because they will be those that are professionally mourning for you. And all of this will happen because God himself will pass through the land in judgment as he promised. I want you to tell somebody, oh, he's coming. Oh, he's coming. Just as he promised. Just as he promised. Amos said that the land of Israel shall be put into mourning and that all places shall be filled with lamentation for the calamities coming upon them. And a lamentation is a painful cry. Yeah. It's a painful sorrow and a grief. So I think we're seeing this in our land today, don't you? Amen. Go downtown on Skid Row. Come on now. In the alleys, on the side streets, uh. on the highways and the byways. <laughs> people killing each other because you're pulled out in front of them. People are getting murdered, Mercy. raped, right. robbed. And all of this is going on right now in That's this right. day and time. Yeah. It's not even safe to walk on the streets alone. Women, you got to have mm -hmm. mace in your purse. Or some of you be saying, oh, I got my little friend in the car. Yeah. We all know what they right. Because you are afraid that you're going to be attacked. Because we're living in those times. But not only are the streets in a bad way. Our homes are in a bad yes, way. Yes. Children are rising up against their parents. Yes. Parents are killing their children. Husbands and wives are living in the same house and there's no love there. Amen. Our schools are in trouble. Yes. We have metal detectors at the door. God Police God. officers patrolling the highways. Dogs sniffing the lockers. They used to be full of books and now it's still a door. Those are all the things that are happening. A mess out there yes. and we as Christians should know that it is. I am telling you all of this to say that I understand the conditions of the world. I'm not condemning it and I'm not saying that it's okay but the reason why is because it is the world. Right. They are living like worldly people, right. ungodly people yes. and you expect that from ungodly people. Right. But what about the church? Come on now. Yes, indeed. 
The day of glory is going to be a day for glory for some and darkness for others. In other words, Amos is trying to tell us right now that we need to get right with our relationship with God. He is going to, if we want to enjoy that day with the Lord, you got to get right. You might be able to escape that devastation, but none of us are going to escape the judgment of God. That's what it means when he say it will be like a picture of a man who escapes from a lion, and while doing so, he runs into the bear, and just when he thought he got away and he got in his house and got all comfortable, the snake ha. came and bit him. I'm getting ready to close right now, but I need you to know, I, I need to know that you got this message. Yes. What? You're gonna, what are you going to do when Jesus comes back on a cloud just like he said he would? Mm. 